Welcome, welcome. May 1, 2017. We're happy to have you here. We're glad to be here. We just got back from New York with 50 of my closest friends. Boy, did we have fun. <laughs> I will let them tell you. I won't tell you. New York gets better every time. It just does. It just gets better every time. And we had a special appearance from one Australian friend of ours. And as you can see, we're being attacked by koalas because we were gifted with a little koala from down under. Everyone who came on the trip got a little koala. <laughs> so that was kind of fun. You know, I think there's just something wonderful about being with f women who sew, who love to sew, because so many other places we go, oh, you sew? Oh, really? You sew? People still sew? <laughs> you know, you get kind of like this answer, like it's so like weird and it's really fun to meet other people who are very normal, <laughs> who just like us, and we love to sew and we're all together, and it's just really a lot of fun. We had a wonderful time. Thanks to everybody who went, um, everybody who didn't. Maybe next year we'll, we'll do it again. Just once a year is good. And our um, Australian friends even got to our little Russian friends. We have our little, you know, the little things that come undone, and they have people inside. You know, they go all these different sizes. And right inside of one of them, sure enough, a koala. <laughs> we have just koalas everywhere. Anyway, we really had a lot of fun. It was a good time. So we're going to start tonight. We've got lots planned for you. Pattern 100 is the pattern of the month. Eileen Fisher is in this particular case. Eileen's pocket blouse. It's a great pattern. I hope you think so. I've shown lots of different things that you can do with it. I'm going to show you a little pattern making, a little, you know, a little here and there. And we're hoping that you will have as much fun with this pattern as I did. It's quick, it's easy, and it is just go cool. But before we do that, we're going to talk about whatever you want to talk about. The questions and the answers. Do we have people? Do we have questions? No questions, no people. <laughs> Hi, people. May 1st. So isn't it officially May Day? Isn't that what they call May 1st? Anyway, Cinco de Mayo is coming up, May 5th. We got all kinds of Mother's Days around the corner. All kinds of May holidays. A lot of graduations. A lot of stuff happening in May. May is a busy, busy month. And in, in Texas, we're still having May, sh April showers. They're just happening in May. The tornadoes, boy, everything is around us but fortunately we're in the clear but there's lots of bad stuff going on and it's close but not close enough which is good news all right what is the sizing difference between your pants pattern with um with our pants patterns they're really you know we, we've talked about what w sizing is and we put up the faqs and it explains what the w sizing is you can refer to that FAQ, it's on the features page. With W sizing, it is, it's mainly the upper portion of the body. It does change the bottom portion of the body, but since um, the waist just gets thicker, there really isn't that much difference between the W size and the regular sizing. The leg, if you have a larger waist and skinny legs, you're gonna to wanna to stay with the regular sizing. If your legs have gotten larger with weight, you'll go into the W sizing. That's really the way to distinguish them. Um, but I don't think our legs are big on either one. And you can always just take out at the side. Just chunk out at the side and you can take away whatever you don't want. But always go regular if you can, if you're in that size. And if you're not, that means the W is the best size for you on that one. Okay? Is 3600 a lined pant? It is not. 3600 is Ralph's pants. I don't think we lined any of our pants. Yeah, I don't think we have lining in any of our pants patterns. 3200, because if you're going to line your pants, you just cut the same thing again. Um, so you wouldn't need a pattern for lining, even if you wanted to in pants. It's just the exact same thing cut again. All right, you often say about washing fabrics, just throw it in the washer and dryer. <laughs> what wash dry temps do you mean? I always mean gentle wash, and I always mean no heat dry. Never heat in the dryer, ever. Heat, you know, heat is what's destructive. 
Um, hot water is destructive. Hot air is destructive. There's no reason to have hot air in the dryer. You just toss it around in the air and eventually it will dry just like if you were to put it outside. It might take longer, but it's much better than the heat. The, especially those dryers get really, really hot. So just an air dry and then just a, um, a cold water gentle wash. Okay. As a new viewer, why do you use 3 8 inch seam allowance? Um, well, if you use 3 8 seam allowance one time, you'll know why, but I'll tell you four reasons why. Um, number one, believe it or not, it may not be a big difference, but it actually uses less fabric. Number two, when you sew, um, especially if you're doing armholes and sleeves, anything that's concave and convex, then you actually can't get the concave part to fit the convex part because it's gotten smaller and smaller as you've added a wider seam allowance and one's gotten bigger and bigger as you add a wider seam allowance and, and sometimes you can't even get the stitch lines back together. So it's a very poor uh, manifestation of two lines that are supposed to be sewn together where sometimes they can't connect simply because the seam allowance. Number three, you add seam allowance only to get the seam line stitched together. And in many cases, when you have 5 eighths, you actually have to trim it after you sew. That doesn't make any sense to me. Um, the, the most efficient thing to do is to use a narrower seam allowance, one that's not completely unmanageable, but 5 eighths is just large, it's just bulky, it's in the way. And that's why I say as you use 3 eighths, It'll be a learning curve, no question, especially if you've used 5 8 for a long period of time. But you will see that you quickly adapt to it and it's so much cleaner and more efficient. Rare, there's only a couple cases where you have to trim 3 8 away and you have to trim it down to an eighth and an eighth is unreasonable. Obviously the main reason I use 3 8 seam allowance is because that's actually what I was trained to do and this, the whole design apparel industry uses two, there's two, they use three eighths and in some cases one half just depending, um, but it's so much cleaner and more efficient. And again, for many of us who have converted because I was a home sewer, I am a home sewer, I used five eight seam allowances because that's what was on all the patterns. It took me about a day to convert. I mean, it was just amazing to me how much easier it was. So give it a try. Obviously, if you, even if you purchase a pattern with uh, 3 8 seam allowance and you want 5 8 you cut a quarter inch outside the line. If you purchase a pattern with 5 8 and you want 3 8 you cut a quarter inch inside the line. So you can go either way you want. Um, but those are the main reasons I use it because it's cleaner and it's more efficient. It's much more, much faster to cut it all out, sew it together, and then cut it all out again. In essence, what you're doing, it just is very time consuming. I've made a pair of the skinny jeans and the legs need to be smaller. Do I take off both outer and inner seams? You do want a skinny jean. A skinny jean is so close to the body that you would take both sides. Having said that, on the thigh, it would come from the outside. Do not go into the inseam of the thigh because you'll reduce the crotch length. Don't do that. On the thigh, stick to the outside and then taper to the knee and then taper from the inseam where it is, you can taper more to the knee. But when you're trying to make the leg smaller, only to the outseam on the thigh. The rest of the leg can be equal. Are the thighs smaller on the jeans pattern versus the pant patterns? Definitely. Yes. Yes. Is the base 100 the classic blouse 600? Yes, it is. It is. So whatever fittings you've done to the 600, if you have fitted that to yourself, you would do the same to the 100. We're gonna go over that tonight, but that's a good question, and yes. What pattern are you wearing? Really cute, thanks, 100. Um, Eileen's pocket blouse, here's the, you know, <laughs> the original reason I copied this blouse, I'm, I'm, and I did, this is years ago, I'm not a pocket person, I'm just not a pocket person. I don't, I mean, I love pockets, don't get me wrong, but when they're in garments to me, they're not real flattering. But when I saw this Eileen Fisher and the way the pockets are done, it's incredible. It's incredible. So I'm a pocket person with this. Okay? So this is Eileen's pocket blouse and I just did a few changes to it and we'll go over it, but thanks.
question. Lately, I've noticed that you are using Fiskars 10-inch scissors during your weekly load cesarean instead of Kai's. Why? Just because they're old and they're beat up. <laughs> so <laughs> I really preserve my beautiful Kai scissors for, you know, I don't know. I just, I have a tendency to want to not use the Kai. I love them so much, and those scissors are on their way out. They are so beat up. I mean, we have dropped them a zillion times. That's our workroom where we do that. And so it's what we cut the fabric with. Um, and so I never want to... <laughs> Please don't tell them this. I don't want to give those guys my nice scissors, so I give them the junky ones. And then usually when I go to cut, I forget to bring the Kai, and so I end up with the <laughs> with those big ugly ones. Time to change your policy. It's what? Time to change your policy. Yeah, I clearly need to switch out and give the guys some nice scissors to cut the fabric with. I can't believe I said that. Anyway. <laughs> All right, we're good on questions. All right, so we do have an awful lot to go over. I kind of went crazy in, as far as making pattern for 100 because I see it as so useful. I see so many uses for it. So I wanted you to share that vision. <laughs> so with, I want to talk about fit first. I want to answer all your fit questions that you have. So with 100, it is the same as 600. It is the same as the base. Now that doesn't mean that... Um, you know, many of you don't have 600, so I'm not trying to just, you know, get away from answering those questions, but it is the same base. So for those of you who have fit 600, it's the same base. All right, so let's go in order. We'll go L, C, and D, and I've got the pattern here. So the very first thing we're doing, I, I did a little tracing of the pattern. It's not the whole pattern, it's just a part of it. But when you're talking L, you're talking base of the neck to bust, and then bust to waist. In this particular pattern, you've only got two lengths. So, I had a lady on the New York trip, and she said to me that all the darts were too high for her. She said eight inches too high, but <laughs> I didn't argue with her, but the cam, that means, anyway, it just can't be that bad. So we just said, okay, I'll show you how to do it. So anyway, I just drew in, this is the pattern, this is the dart, and if you notice, there's an area on every pattern that is below the armhole and above the dart below the armhole and above the bust dart. So if you want to lower the dart, now, and let's just kind of go over this dart thing here for a minute. This is a bust dart. The goal of a bust dart is to, let me just kind of fold this out so you can kind of see what's going on here. All right, the goal of a bust dart is to take away length, an uneven length. A bust dart is a horizontal dart, and horizontal darts affect length. But they don't affect length that's the same all the way across. They affect an uneven length. So because I have less, I need less length at the side of my body than I do in the center, I take a dart. And that dart ends internally, it's stitched on the sewing machine, and it leaves the length the same in the middle, but it takes it away at the side. So an uneven length is called depth. Okay. But when we want to lower the whole dart, there's nothing wrong with the dart, we just want to lower the whole dart, we cut on this black line. I'm going to call it the free zone because it's an area that is completely free. And what we do is we add a piece of paper in the back. And I'm just going to quickly, crudely add a little piece here so that you can see that if I wanted to lower it, one inch or two inches or whatever the number is that's what I that's how I would do it so you can now see that length is even it's the same all the way across and I've lowered the whole dart down I don't have to redraw the dart in I don't have to change the tip the goal of that dart is to take away the length on one side not in the middle but its positioning should be anywhere within the bus circle I've said to you many times, it doesn't matter where it is in the bus circle, as long as it's within the bus circle. It's a three inch radius around the bus point. So as long as it comes in. However, having said that, the goal of the dart is not to be visual. It should not be seen. So if it's under the bulge and to the side of the bulge, that's the best case scenario because you can see in any of these jackets, there's a dart there, but it's certainly hard to see it because it's at the side of the body and toward the bottom of the bulge. So again, because it's not a design feature, it's a fit feature, we can see that we can place it strategically to where it's not visual, and that's what we want. And then you cut this off, you cut this off, 
and I have added length. Now, the next thing I have to do when I add length is I have to say to myself, okay, I've not only lowered the dart, but I've made the whole side seam longer. So then I can come back in right underneath the dart or at the bottom, it doesn't matter where it is, and I take away the same amount that I've added, and then it goes back to being the same before I started. So that's length, that's dealing with length. Um, if you wanted the blast longer, you could leave it there and then you could slash the back and add there also. So you could just lengthen the blouse by that much. It's your options, your choices. Um, I just wanted you to see that length is even all the way across. And when I go to lower a dart, that's not a depth issue, that's a length issue. And I just make a slash. All right, so in that particular case, that's length. Circumference is by my bust. Anytime you're doing a blouse, you choose by the bust, not by the waist or the hips, but by the blouse. You're going to measure a blouse that you like in ready to wear, measure it right through the fullest part of the garment, and then make that size. That's going to tell you the ease you like, that's going to tell you how much extra you like, and that is simply done once you measure the circumference, then you're going to pick the cup sizing. That's going to somewhat correspond to your bra cup sizing. If you're not sure, I get many questions. I'm a B, I'm a C, I'm a, I don't know what I am. Go to the larger cup size. This is not like it is the same numbering as bra cup sizing, but it is not the same. And so you're always better off to go up. You're not going to get any little points. You're not going to, none of that's going to happen. Again, you're better off to go to the larger cup size. If you're in doubt between a C and a D, go to a D. Okay, so that's length, that's circumference, and then depth and the depth is done for you. You're just gonna pick that cup size that you are. You'll stitch that. The shoulder angle is also depth, so you're gonna be careful that if you make up a muslin, and I would recommend you make up a muslin, it won't take you long. There's only two pieces that you really need a muslin for, and it's the front and the back. The sleeve you can really measure. The sleeve you can kind of use a standard. If you're not sure, make the sleeve up, but it's, um, it's really the front and the back more than anything that you really need. So just throw together the front and the back and then watch this angle. If this angle is wrong, it'll puddle right here by the armhole, both front and back. And so it has to be picked up to where you leave this point alone and you change that point. So you just change the angle there is what you need to do. Some of you will need to do a sway back adjustment and that's on the back of the pattern. And that's right through usually the back area. But again, wait to do the muslin because this doesn't have any back darts. And so in a lot of cases, you won't, be, you won't need to do it. Some of you make a slash for a, for a rounded back and you'll make that right through here. It doesn't have a collar. And so in, in a lot of you who make that slash for that rounded back won't need to make that slash either because there's no collar attachment necessary. So that's really all the fitting there is. It's pretty simple. Um, I think with all the different sizes we have and different cup sizes we have, you shouldn't be doing a lot of changes. If you're doing a lot of changes, you're probably in the wrong size. I've said that many times to you guys. Um, and over and over, those who have said, oh, I'm making this change, this change, this change, I said, let's think this through and redo the size. And when we've come to the closer size, yes, the, the, all, the, the changes that we have to make are, are really minor, okay? Okay. Yay. Hi from Florida. Hi Florida. If you have a chance to answer another question, I'll make a chance. It's about the 1 8 inch seam allowance for the cut up tee. What are the tricks to keeping it straight? I got a question on this on an email the other day and I, that I answered. Um, what I do is I've got this, well, I've got a foot and my foot has a lot of markings on it. And even if your foot doesn't have a lot of markings on it, make the markings, like put a little piece of masking tape across it and then just make little red marks or little black marks. So when I'm top stitching, when I'm, gosh, doing zippers, when I'm doing anything that needs to be straight, I pick a mark on that foot and then, you know, I overlap my two one eights and, and they are each to their side and then I just go. So I think it's about picking a spot on the foot I find that with all my sewing, I pick a spot on that foot and then I just follow it. 
So that particular, I've got a Viking and the little particular Teflon foot that I use, it has like three or four different little prongs or marks. And those are extremely helpful. So I use my foot is what I suggest to you. And if it doesn't have markings, I, I don't see why you couldn't add it on with something. So hopefully that helps. I think that's the best way. Otherwise you're just eyeballing it completely. I'm eyeballing it, but I'm, I'm using that as a guide. If a dart needs to be raised more than available space, what's the fix? It doesn't. It doesn't need to be raised more. There's What we should probably try to do is not make up scenarios that don't happen with these patterns. So that, I mean, I've been doing this for 20 years and I've never seen that happen. So if that's the case with these particular patterns, just email me privately. I don't understand what could be going on. You guys, the bodies are, base of the neck to bust is 12 inches. And I've done this many times in live presentations. I've taken a woman who's five foot and a woman who's six foot. And a woman who's five foot might be 11 and a half and a woman who's six foot might be 12 and a half, base of the neck to bust. It's called the newscaster effect. And when you look at the body, from the bust up, we're across the board pretty much all the same. Because we're five feet doesn't mean our bust point is like 10 inches. It's just not. I don't know why. I don't, I'm not, I don't know. I just know that we're universally very, very similar regardless of our height. So there's enough space in there that it's, you're not going to have to raise the bust point that high that it's, you know, I don't know how to say to you that's not going to happen except that that's not going to happen. Bust dart lowered, doesn't it need to point to bust apex to look best? Absolutely not. Does it need to point to the bust apex to look the best? No, that's an old, 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 you know, like home ec teacher's rule. No, it, it actually shouldn't point. I mean, they'll all point to the apex. They'll all, no, they won't actually, that's not true. They'll all go to the bust circle. They don't have to point to the apex. You know, what we don't want is a dart screaming, hey, here's my bust, here's my bust. We want a, a dart that does its job. Its job is to take away length from the side. So that's what we want that dart to do. And we want it to be non-visual. It is not a design feature. It is a fit feature. We do not want fit features to be visual. So it does not look best pointing at the apex. It's your choice. If you want it to point to your bust point for the world, then you can. If you go back to the um, Oscars, Anne Hathaway, if you Google Anne Hathaway pink dress at the Oscars, um, it was all over social media. Her, I mean, everywhere. It was, every, it was like the laughing joke dress because her darts pointed right to her nipples and it looked ridiculous. It was, I think Prada, I, I think it was Prada that did the dress. Um, but no, I definitely don't want my darts pointing to my apex. All right, does this pattern have regular darts versus French darts? Just a regular bus dart, just a regular bus dart. Now, and for some cases, in some cases, um, that, again, if you, if you look at the dart that comes from the side and goes to the bus point, if that dart gets larger and larger and larger, then it's harder for that dart to graduate to nothing because I've only got um, six inches, pick a number. I don't have a lot of, especially if you have a small circumference with a large dart. Now I've done all it for you. I've made it graceful. I've done all that. The advantage of, of moving the dart, if you have a hard time getting it to come from here to nothing, then the French dart, what it does is it has a longer running space. And so it can graduate to nothing much easier being a larger dart than what the regular bus dart can, which is why French darts were so loved and adored because they, they were good for everyone. If you're a B cup or a C cup, even a D cup, you're not gonna have any problem with this dart. But sometimes if you get into your larger cup sizes and your double D, then sometimes this dart, you know, it won't accommodate every figure out there. I've had to move it and draw it up. I mean, um, actually angle, actually close this and open it up to where it's coming at an angle more. Not necessarily a French dart, because a French dart combines the bust dart and the waist dart. 
but bring it down with the angle so that it has a little more running room before it tapers to nothing, which has been really, really helpful for many ladies. If you're larger busted. Can a mandarin collar be added to this pattern? It can, sure. Mandarin collar can be added to any pattern as long as you know how to draw the mandarin collar. Okay, I want to widen the bottoms of 3400 yoga pant from 17 hem to 21. Should I slash it up to the knee or higher? How many slashes? Well, first off, you don't need to be slashing on circumference. Um, that's just not enough. You're only adding four inches and you've got four seams. You're going 17 to 21. So all you have, to, you don't need to slash at all. Just add an inch on each side and taper to nothing at the knee and that will give you the four inches. Slashing is, is probably misunderstood. I'm only slashing when I'm adding extreme amounts you know, one to one and a half, a lot, so to keep the hem even, but an inch is just not enough. I can just add an inch at each seam. So keep it simple. Whenever I can keep it simple, keep it simple. Okay? Okay, so um, I feel like we've covered fit. We're okay with that. Let's go into styling. And I, I really, you know, whenever I do these, you guys, I'm trying to do the simplest, different fabrics, different sleeves, just to show you a myriad of things that you can do with one pattern. And I really enjoy doing it. Um, if I were to step away and say these five, the one I have on, as well as these, are all the same pattern. And you'd look at those and say they don't even, they don't even look close to being the same. And so I think that's what I really like. I really like that. See, we're being attacked by koalas. They're all over the place. I'm going to start with this one because this one to me is... Um, I, I think it's, I mean, I think they're all on trend, but shears are very popular right now. And this is a, um, this was an Ellie Tahari that I had seen and I just absolutely loved it. Um, I somewhat want you to see, because it's amazing when you put a beige blouse underneath it, it completely changes the look because it is a sheer, whatever you put underneath it changes the look completely. The reason I, I like this so much is it's simply two pieces, two pieces. It's the front and the back. That's all it is. I folded up the pockets and in the shears, I love the way this looks. I just love it. You, you see through it, but you don't see through it. The pattern is such that you can put it anywhere. So these two ended zippers are wildly popular. I had them made because I could not find them anywhere. I couldn't find them. I went to just buy one for myself and I couldn't find it. So I decided that you guys were probably having the same problem. Ellie Tahari literally laid the zipper right on top of the garment, so that's what I did. I laid it on the top, I just folded this back. I mean, you could zip it up, it doesn't matter what you do there. Um, I, I layered it over 215 Nikki's top. It's just a black base that I have. But again, when I did it uh, on a white top, it looks completely different and really springy, more springy. Um, it tones it down a little bit when it's over black, you know, just how shears do. But it's just really a fun top to play with. It's really a fun fabric. So you can take your shears, you can do a front and a back. What I wanted to show you on this um, waist, because what I did, as you can see, I did it, I did a little casing all the way around, but I did it on the top. I actually laid it right on top. Again, that's what Ellie Tahari did, and I was kind of following that. So what I did is I cut um, just out of the same fabric, just a strip. I folded it, top stitched it, and then laid it literally right on top of the fabric and stitched on both sides. So the casing is on the outside, not on the inside. And then I took the same fabric again and I cut another strip and I just folded it and kept kind of, I folded it in half and then in half again to make a really thin tie and stitched it right down the middle and then tied the knots on the end and then use these little, um, those little toggles we have. What are these called? <laughs> we have them on the site, um, you know, they're cord, cord stops. I'm sorry, that's what they are, they're cord stops. So you can just, um, I kind of made this gathered now rather than worrying about any darts. Gathered it up and put the little cord stops on. Again, it really, none of this was really my idea. It was all Ellie Tahari. They had a beautiful sheer vest, and I just absolutely fell in love with it. I didn't use the serger at all. On the sleeves, on the edges, I just rolled it over just twice, like a little quarter and then a half to be the three-eighths. 
or an eighth and a quarter, whatever makes the three eighths. You know, just a little bit. It's very easy. It's a polyester fabric. The sheer is, but it's so easy to sew on. It was really, really easy. On the bottom, I did the same thing. Just fold and fold twice. On the shoulder seams and the side seams, I did a French seam. You don't have to. You could use the serger there. They don't really show, but really fun. Just really, really fun to sew, and I absolutely love it. I, I'm going to a little dinner thing tomorrow night. And I can't wait to wear it. And I'm going to do, I made it long enough to where I could wear leggings with it. I'm going to do white leggings and white top and, and make it look just the opposite of what it looks now and really give it a fresh look. But again, I love the pockets, love everything about it. Really simple, two pieces, working with a little bit of sheer, all done on the sewing machine. Everything done on the sewing machine. All right. So then I decided we needed to go to a knit. The one I have on, I used three pieces. And didn't change the pattern at all. So front, the back, and the sleeves. I take that back. I did change the pattern. Sorry. Because what I did was I put the front of the pattern. There's a button of front up the front. And I took the center front and put it to the fold. Nope, I made a seam. Sorry, I made a seam. But I did that just to get orientation of the pockets. So I made a seam down center front and made the pockets. Um, and didn't make any changes. So you can see it's a little loose, just like a woven would be, even though it's a knit. And I did do a knit armhole and I did a knit sleeve because I didn't want the fullness in the sleeve. And then I just made a three quarter sleeve. So this is just a netting. I have a little camisole underneath it. And again, really something you can change the look up depending on what you put underneath. If I wanted it to be, um, you know, a different color, I could certainly do that. The fabric itself has some gray, some navy, I could really change it up a bit. So this was just quick, 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 and really easy and simple, and I, I love it. I've had it on all day. It's really nice and it's comfortable. Someone came over and said, oh, you're all dressed up, and I have my jean leggings on. I'm just definitely not dressed up, but it, it you know, kind of portrays that feeling, all right? Okay, when you measure from shoulder point to bust point, base of the neck, is that from the middle of the shoulder, the top of the shoulder, or the base of the neck? Well, I, I'm not a believer in measuring, you guys. That's why I've said to you, don't measure. Make up a muslin. Then if you want the dart to come up, you raise it. If you want it to come down, you slash the pattern and add. I'm not a believer in measuring. I, the, the measurement is from the base of the neck to the bust point, but the whole point is there is no base of the neck. There's no like, oh, here's my base of my neck. Oh, here's the middle. It's too generic. So because there's not one certain point, then there's no way to measure and get it exactly accurate. So I keep saying to you all, I think you're better off to make up a muslin. Don't measure anything. Don't make any changes. Just make it up and then see, do you want to make changes? Okay? Okay. If you pick, the sh if you pick up the shoulder, do you make changes to the armhole and sleeve? Yes. Whenever you um, pick up the shoulder seam, you've affected the armhole. So then you ask yourself, do I want the armhole to be smaller and change the sleeve? Or is there nothing wrong with the armhole and do I just draw it lower and restore it to exactly what it was? So I always have those two options and you can make whichever option you chose. In my particular case, when I'm making this, I pick up the shoulder and once I pick up the shoulder, it becomes my knit armhole. So I don't restore it and I just use my knit sleeve and there I have it. Okay, so if you have to change the shoulder, just be aware of your two options and what you can do. Is the tank top the pattern base for the POM? No, the tank top is a baby all into itself. Okay, okay. Where do the drawstrings stop? I stop them three inches from center front. And that was just random, you guys. I actually went by the stripes on the fabric. There was not a, a precise reason why. I just wanted to stop it right at the same point, so I measured the little stripes and made sure they both stopped. It d doesn't really make a difference. And you guys, a lot of these are style options. So, you know, I don't think they're right or wrong to do them one way or another. Okay. 
Is there a casing inside the vest? There's a casing outside the vest. I put it on the outside, and that way I didn't have to make any buttonholes when that string came from the inside casing to the outside. Ellie Tahari did it that way also, but I thought that's pretty smart. They didn't, so with a sheer, what difference does it make if it's on the inside or the outside? You're gonna see it anyway. So I put it right on the outside, and I love it. I love the way it looks. And then so once the, the drawstring came out, it, it was right on top anyway, and then I put the cord stops on. I just love that vest. Does the zipper go all the way down and you shorten the zipper stop? No, I did not shorten anything. The zipper goes all the way down. These zippers are longer. It stops about an inch from the top up here. This is the actual pattern. I didn't make any changes. The zipper's at the bottom. It's, you know, maybe a half inch from the bottom and it's probably an inch. The tape goes all the way to the top. So it just happened that it was the right length. I didn't make any changes on that. You could shorten from the top. You could cut off at the top if you wanted to. Okay. Okay, so that covers two of them. Then I moved into um, this one. And this one I used, I love this fabric. It's, it's like an acrylic. I just love it. It's soft. It's wonderful. And it's really pretty. It's got a yard of fabric, but if what I want you to notice is, and this is where I think it's really fun to kind of start with the fabric and then just evolve. And when you look at the fabric and say, okay, what's the very, what's the very best I can do with this? When I looked at this fabric, and you can look at it and probably see different things than what I see, but when I looked at it, you can see it's like dark on this side, but it graduated over to a lighter. And so what I did is I put the lighter on the front left side and on the back left side so you get this whole lighter panel all the way going down one side and I did it to the sleeve also you can see it comes right up the sleeve and then on the back on the other side you can see it's dark all the way down and so the back here matches here and the sleeve so you can see you have two different color sleeves but you have two different color sides and whenever you do that you're always going to look slimmer than if you don't. <laughs> so that's why I was doing it. As long as I had this fabric where it was built in, I was just gonna take advantage of it and make this side, you know, it almost disappears when you have verticals that are different colors on both sides. You look a third the size than if you have fabric that goes all the way. So that was a reason I did that. Now on this one, I only had the front, the back, and the sleeve. I folded up the pocket. I did not do any pockets on this because this is a tunic. So there's, I, I lengthened this 10 inches. This goes all the way to my knee. It's adorable. I saw this in Neiman Marcus. It was just a long tunic. There was a belt at the waist and it's, I'm going to wear this with black leggings. So it's just like a t-shirt, but it's long with long slits at the side. The slits come like thigh area. And so the tunic actually kind of opens when you walk. It's just so cute. I can't, I've not worn this and I can't wait to wear it. But I just absolutely love it. And then just a little belt at the waist. And these belts, you guys, I actually had this guy that, um, one of my fabric guys had a whole bunch of belts. He sent me a whole bunch of belts. So I put one. Of, I put this belt up on the site. We put it up earlier today for 10 bucks. <laughs> he gave me a great deal on all these belts. So I thought, you know what, if you guys like these belts, we'll pass them along. This one I liked because you can adjust it. It's like the whole thing is... You know, you can put the buckle in any one you want. Anyway, it's on the site. You can look at it. But I really like that belt. You don't see a lot of the belt, but it really makes a great um, blue sawn look. And we know blue sawn is really slimming. You could certainly not wear it with any belt, and it's still a great look. I just decided that it was nice to see it belted a little bit. So no changes. I put the center front on the fold, closed up the pocket. That's it and then lengthened it. I lengthened it 10 inches. The slits, if you notice, are just basically below the waist, their hip area. So the slits go a long way. And the higher those slits are, you can't see anything because you can only see the side of your legging and you can't see anything with that either. Um, and, and it lays really nicely, really pretty. All right. All right, so then we jump, oops, I, I love three, four sleeves. Should I narrow the sleeve toward the hem? Yes, if you're using the, the sleeve that comes in the pattern, yes, you wanna lower it. I did not use that sleeve because I did not make the pattern. 
I guess usually when I'm doing POMs, I won't make the pattern as it is because you can already see how it is. To me, my goal is to kind of give you different ideas. But yes, if you're gonna use a woven sleeve, and actually that's the next one I did, but what I did is, um, this is, I used a two-piece sleeve. So I took the sleeve pattern from 709, which is Kelsey's blouse, and the armhole, it's the same size. You could use 900, the um, jean jacket, because I, I made a three-quarter sleeve. I love this jacket, absolutely love this jacket. So this was a jacket I had seen in Nordstrom's, and it was just a real beautiful, kind of linen-like looking summery jacket, no lining, no facings, the zipper is just put in, um, and the, the front here is curved, the neckline is curved, and then the bottom is curved. So real simple and real easy to do. Again, here's my pockets. Love these pockets. You just don't even see them because it's the way it's made in the pattern. Um, this is just beautiful on. Love the fabric. And then a real, a, a nice little shot of color underneath. Just a real pop of color. I mean, obviously you could do it black, but a pop of any color. I put blue under it. Diff all the different colors looked really nice and really just made the whole thing pop. <laughs> you know, in this particular case where I curved the bottom, the, the zipper was a little bit too long because this is the same zipper again. So what I did, if you notice, is I brought it all the way around the curved neck edge until it finally just stopped. And I like the look. I've seen it before. I've seen several other designers just continue the zipper all the way up the neck edge. And so I just decided to do that. Didn't make any changes in the pattern itself. Just curved here, curved here, and then I completely changed out the sleeve and used a two-piece sleeve. And didn't do, I have to do anything to the armhole because it was already done for me. In the back of the jacket, because now I wanted it to be a jacket, I did put two darts. Four inches away from center back, just run a vertical dart. And you can drape them when they're on you. It's really easy to do because then you don't have to worry about a sway back. You just reach back, pinch, pinch, put a pin in, take it off, measure them, get them even, sew them and then put it back on or you could pin them and then put it back on before you sew it so in this case because this zipper is down really far and this zipper is up really far you see what it does is it almost just works like a button or a class meeting in the middle so i love these zippers i i just think i'm just really excited that we have them but like i said they just act like a class but i think they're a little bit more flattering they're easy to work with they're really fun all right so that's the jacket so 100 is, can be worn open as a jacket. I just think if you want to do a sleeve to it, the two-piece, unless you're going to do a short sleeve, the two-piece sleeve is a great answer because it comes in and anytime you're using a fabric that has more weight to it, that two-piece sleeve just really looks nice and it bends rather than it twisting. A one-piece sleeve is always going to twist and this is not a heavy fabric but it definitely has more direction. So when you're coming in with that direction, that two-piece sleeve is always going to work better. I just love that. Just think it's really good looking. Great for summertime, like I said. Great look, everything. How much fabric did it take for the sheer vest? It takes two yards because of the pockets. So um, I guess it depends on the size you are. Y you might be able to get away with one yard but, but I think most of these all took two yards. But again, it's just simply because uh, when you're doing the front, the pocket piece itself, you know, it's long. It goes a long ways. And with this, va with this fabric, the, the lines run um, from selvage to selvage. So you have to go this way with it. And so it takes up one yard. I mean, it, it's close, it's close. I, I cut off two yards before I started, threw it in the washer, threw it in the dryer, then I had my two yards, okay? How long is the zipper and do you sew it in? Um, you, do you sell those zippers? I sell them, you sew it in, and the zipper is, I believe they're 24 inches. You have to look on the website. If you look under Notions and look under Zippers, you'll see them under Notions, and they're the, the two-ended zippers. I li like I said, I really like them. I can't say that enough. Um, they're all over and ready to wear. And so I, I feel like I can't make contemporary clothes without having those two-ended zippers. They're just a lot of fun to play with. They're really easy to put in because you can actually take the zipper apart. 
you sew one in one side, one in the other, and you put it back together. So it's really quick and easy. What are the vertical lines on the green vest? Is it quilted? No, here it's sheer. Let me, I'll take it off just so you can kind of see. No, this is a, this is completely sheer. The green lines are just a part of the fabric. There, do you see that? That's what the fabric looks like. And we put it up today, so the fabric, you can look at the fabric on it. See, it's sheer, it's, it's like completely sheer. You can see that, can't they? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, if I put, like, that's what I was saying, if I put white behind it, you know, you get a completely different look than if you put the black behind it. The, when you put the black behind it, it just, the, the black pops. When you put the white behind it, the white pops. So it all, it's really, like I said, it's really a fun fabric to do because it looks so different on, depending on what you have underneath it. Okay, are we okay with questions? On the red black tunic, how is the neck finished? Does it go over your head and is there a neck opening in the back? Um, no, this is a knit. So I just surged the edge, turned under, and top stitched. There's no opening. There doesn't need an opening. It slips right over your head. It's just a tunic, literally. It's a knit sleeve. No, it's not a knit sleeve. I did not use the knit sleeve. I went ahead and used the regular. Um, I did go down for me from the size I normally use. I went down a size, but I didn't want it to be tight. I wanted it, I wanted it to have some negative ease, and you can just curb the side seam a little bit. You know, you can shape it a little bit, but, you, but it's like this. You don't want to overfit it. You just want to have some shaping to it. It's not like a t-shirt, if that makes sense. Um, until I went to this one, then I made it a little more fitted. But with this one, you can pull it over your head. The tunic, it's long, it's to my knees. Slid up the side, it's really quick. Very easy to make. I had used fold over elastic in this, so I figured to have a little bit of variation, I didn't use fold over elastic with this. And also, generally, I don't want to use fold-over elastic if I'm going to do a belt. Gener because the fold-over elastic becomes the focus, and the belt becomes the focus. So you really want to keep to one focus. And if you have two, it almost looks like a bunch of horizontals going across you. Not all the time, but just kind of keep that in mind as you're deciding, do I want to just finish the neck or do I want fold-over? And fold-over will stop the eye. And in some cases, that's a good thing. And this, that's a good thing because I've got all these checks and there's all this movement and what I want is to stop the eye. And so I stop it with that fold over elastic, okay? This one, everything's moving up and down, it's moving great, left it alone. Okay, all right, so I love this one. Just love it. This is, you know, I guess I kind of, you know, and I'm gonna show you the changes I made in the back. This was, you guys, you know I get lots of good ideas from you all. This was an idea that I had gotten sent to me. And so I did some changes in the back and I'll show you those changes. This is just cute. I mean, it's just so cute on. Little black leggings, even capri leggings. It, it is just the most, I feel like it's almost my pajamas. They're so comfortable, but it's so, I just think it's really cute. It's that whole concept that we just want a really cute t-shirt we want it to be as comfortable as a t-shirt but but not it really is okay so um here's my pockets i put the center front on the fold and did the pockets just like normal i just put the whole entire thing on the angle of the of the bias angle of the, not of the cloth but just of the print itself now i when i did diagonals a couple weeks ago i did that diagonal um, t-shirt, the, the um, lined stripes. And when I did that, I was showing you guys how to use the one inch. Well, it turns out these are exactly one inch squares. So you can actually use the fabric to place the pattern. You want to put the print up and you can actually lay the fabric, or I'm sorry, the, the, the edge of the pattern right on the stripes and watch it go through all of these numbers. And the reason I did that is because it lines up with the back exactly. So the front and the back come together exactly. The sleeves, if you notice, they're straight of grain. But even though they're, I mean, straight of stripe, there's no straight of grain on a knit, but they're straight. So you can see that these come right up to the shoulder, even though they're not necessarily aligned, that's just how it works. If this is done at the right angle, okay? 
So this was done by us, the back was done by us, and then I created this fun little, almost like a little t-shirt back. And I'm gonna show you how I did that. It's just, I timed myself. It took me 20 minutes. It took me 20 minutes to create it. Are all the garments POM 100? Yes, these are all 100s. See, isn't that cool? You can have a whole ocean of 100s. <laughs> okay, so this is the back. And what I did is I came down to right about the waist area. And you can see that I cut it off. So literally, I made a cut line, cut it off. Okay, this is my next part right there. And then what I did with the bottom portion is I cut and added two inches because I wanted a pleat here and I wanted a pleat here. And I wanted each of those pleats to be one inch deep. So if you stick your finger in them, they're one inch deep. And of course, each square is one inch. So I added two inches. You only have to make one cut and add one pleat and add two inches. And then I added three inches at center back, tapering to nothing here. Why? Because and I know it's kind of short. You may not be able to see it. It's got like a scoop bottom. Okay, so it's just really cute. It's got this little scoop bottom here. It's got the back piece here. This is on the the angle. This is a straight, and it's just cute. It's really cute. It's got the front pockets, and then I did a little short sleeve. So see, you can put your hand in the pocket. There you go. <laughs> Look how cute that looks. <laughs> All right. These pockets, even in a knit, I was afraid they might droop. You can see they don't because there's only like five inches, five and a half inches that they're open. And so when you're stitching everything right, they don't sag. They, I, I was surprised. I thought maybe if I wore it long enough, they'd start, but they don't. The body just holds them up and they stay really nicely. That's all in your pattern. You don't have to worry about that. Finished it with a fold over edge. Remember, whenever you finish it with a fold off, over edge, cut the seam allowance off and then put the fold over on so it's finished once you're done with it. If you put it on top, sometimes the neckline can be too small because you're adding, you're leaving that seam allowance on. So I usually cut it off and then add the, the fold over elastic. And the more you do this fold over elastic, the better you'll get. I'm getting to where I can just zip on through it. It's fun. It's really fun. All right. Questions on that? They're all, we've got a knit, a knit, a sheer woven, a jacket, and then mine's kind of like a sheer lace, stretch lace. And you guys, there's a lot of great stretch laces out there. Really, they're pretty, they're fun, they're easy. And then just wear them over a camisole or a tank, or you could even make the same shirt twice. I could go through and make 100 again in a black knit and just wear them on top of each other. That I was thinking about doing that, and I thought, well, I'll just wear a camisole because that will work. But you certainly could. It'd be a nice, be a nice kind of base for it. Okay, are we good? We have five minutes left. I thought, man, I've got so much to pack in here tonight. It's all good. Questions? Anything goes? Is the sure fabric you're wearing on the website? It is, but I don't remember the name of it. Um, Afterwards, you guys, we'll have all of the fabrics up on the replay page. Does everybody know where these replay pages are? If you go to the very front page on the right-hand side, it says view our previous websites. And we will, when you click on that and you click on tonight's page, it'll have all the fabrics and all the patterns that we used. And the fabric is called the Midnight Mesh Floral Knit. Do you know the number by chance? One two one one. One two one one. Midnight floral. Midnight mesh floral knit. It has a navy in it, but it also has a black, so it works really well with either one. Looks. I put it on with my denim leggings. I love it. I just really like it. Like I said, somebody said I was actually dressed up today. Wow, what a deal! <laughs> it's really when you're not feeling dressed up. It's really nice when someone tells you you look dressed up. On the fold over elastic, do you make a circle and sew it on or use the left shoulder like in the past? I make a circle and sew it on. I do use the left shoulder as my starting point, um, but I make the circle and sew it on. You can do it either way, either way, whatever works for you. 
as you get better and just keep doing it. And in the beginning, just use black because people can't see the mistakes. And then when you use white, you'll see how good you are. So in the beginning, use the black and it's, it's really easy to do and you won't see all your boo-boos and you'll like it. Good place to start. We have the black with silver now elastic. We have the white with gold. We have the white with silver. We got all kinds of fold over trim. It's fun. It's really fun for summertime for finishing t-shirts and stuff. So we, I know you have a lot of it. On last month's POM, the wrap dress, how important is the front facing? Could you just turn under the front edge and hem the front piece instead? Yes, you could, but the role that that, that's a great question. The role that that front facing plays is it stabilizes that whole neck edge. What happens if you take and just hem the very edge of that garment? Then the edge becomes heavy and has a tendency to fall down and gap. Whereas when the whole thing is faced, it lays and it's secured by the princess seam. It, it's much, it's just a better, it's, it's a lot better. I mean, you know, I don't know why you're thinking about doing it. If it's just kind of sheer laziness, don't do it. If it's because you don't have enough fabric, find another fabric that would be contrast, like a solid that would be cute so that when you fold it back, you'll see the, the contrasting fabric. But I would not just hem the edge. I just wouldn't. I don't think it's, um, I don't think you're going to be happy with it. Try it. Let me know. Um, do you still have knit muslin? Yes and no. Um, when we went to New York, I got some more. I found more. This stuff is like exhausting me. We have it coming. It won't be till the end of May. So as soon as it's up, we'll send out an email, let you know. Does the vest have a facing? It does not. Two pieces, just front, just back. The zipper is literally put on top of the fabric. So I hemmed the front just like you would normally hem it and then stuck the zipper on top and stitched it on. It's very pretty, very pretty. What material do you use for a swing dress? Something summery. Um, there's a lot of knits out here, a lot of knits. And there's a lot of knits. You could do this and do a bias. Um, you could do what I have on and then do like a black rayon knit underneath it. Lot, we have lots of knits on there that would work really well. Any of those knits, one way stretch is really all you need. Okay. In two weeks, you guys, we're going to do a, um, a webcast on summer jackets. I've asked, been asked a lot about summer jackets. There's so many cute jackets out there, and I want to make them quick and easy for you. So we're going to do some summer jackets. That's in two weeks, which would be the 15th, May 15th. For those of you in Portland, I'll see you this weekend. Could you show us a close-up neckline of the blue-black check top, please? A close-up neckline? We, do you want the koalas on or off? It's just fold over elastic right on top. We'll move all the koalas. All right. I don't know how close up you want us to get, but that's about as close up as it's going to get. All right. Okay. Anything else? It's time to sew. Let's go sew, man. Anything else? How did you finish this? How did you finish the center front prior to inserting the zipper on the green shear? Every time I finish that green shear, I folded and folded again. So remember, down the front, I had a one inch on the front of the blouse. So I folded and folded over. I made about a half inch tab and top stitched that. And then I put the zipper right on top and stitched the zipper twice. So the zipper is nice and secure. So even when it folds back, you see two, two beautiful lines of stitching. Just looks really nice. I'm really happy with the way it turned out. Peggy, do you, can we do a cold shoulder? Can we? I don't know. Can, what do you mean? <laughs> Peggy, do you do a New York trip each year? Yeah. Yes. I keep, t I keep telling myself, you know, look, you guys, the honest is I love the ladies. I absolutely do it for you ladies who went and you all know who went. We had a wonderful time. But the hassles are like off the off the charts. Dealing with 50 women with hotel rooms and lunches and bus and ugh, you know that's just not fun. It's just not fun. So far, the the joy I get from the women are outweighing the hassles. But after today of being half the day on the phone dealing with the hassles, 
I don't know. It changes my mind. But do I think we're going to do it yet? Yeah, we're going to do it next year. Absolutely. We'll do, right now, we'll do it once a year. We'll keep it at once a year. And I think that that works. I think it works. It's a lot of fun. It really is. And I really enjoy getting to meet you all and see you all. It's a fast weekend. It's a busy weekend. It's a tiring weekend. I'll bet there's not five ladies from that trip watching this webcast because they're exhausted. We wiped them out, man. <laughs> It's really tiring to just, you know, just it's so much. You take in so much that it's, you know, everybody said by the end, I'm just too much fabric. I'm overstimulated, you know. I'm like on, on my eyes are Google, you know. There's just so much. There's so much there. But it was fun. They're all in bed tonight. <laughs> Is there a way to see if there are spiffy graduates nearby to help with fitting if unable to attend one of your workshops? Yeah, just email me. I'll tell you where they are. We've got some really, really good ones out there, and we need, a, we need lots more. We need really good ladies who really want to do this because the ones who are really doing it, who are really pushing it, oh, it's so awesome. Very awesome. But just email me. All right, ladies, we're going to say good night. Farewell. Da 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 da. Farewell. Yeah, you are. We will see you in two weeks. Happy sewing from Silhouette Patterns. Good night.